welcome to Connecting Hawaii Business on Think Tech Hawaii. My name is Kathleen Lee, owner of Kathleen Lee Consulting, and I am your host for this program. Think Tech Hawaii is currently live streamed on thinktechhawaii.com as well as on Think Tech Hawaii's Facebook and YouTube channel. And for viewers out there, you may ask us questions during the show by emailing them to questions at thinktechhawaii.com. Um, now that we've gotten that intro out of the way, I am excited that we're turning up the heat in today's show by having the owners of Maui Chili Chili Oil on our show. So it's Chili Chili in Hawaii with Kit and Darren Furukawa. Kit and Darren, welcome to Connecting Hawaii Business. Hello, hello. Hi, thank you for having us. We're excited to be here. I'm excited that you guys are here. So let's Tell our viewers about yourselves. Kit, let's start with you. Well, my, my background is government, actually. I've had years working for the county and then nonprofit. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm from the Philippines. I'm Filipino. I moved to Hawaii, now living on Maui. Um, and you can say I'm a serial entrepreneur. You know, I, I opened an escape room in 2018, you know, after years of working for the government and just decided, you know, why not give it a try? So uh, now diving into this whole uh, whole business world <laughs> with my husband now, Darren. With your husband, Darren. So Darren, let's go through your intro. Tell our viewers about yourself. Well, I like to eat, <laughs> which is why we're here. But um, I come from a construction background. So I was a construction painter for many years. Um, I took the full leap this summer to do this chili oil business and to help my wife with her escape room since it's really busy. So I'm following in her entrepreneurial footsteps as I'm learning and I'm learning a lot on the way, along the way. That's wonderful. I actually almost forgot that you guys had an escape room. So let's have that on another show. <laughs> sure. When I get to Maui, but focusing back on Maui chili, chili oil, why is it Maui Chili Chili. Why is it named twice? I love how you guys said so because you had to name it twice. But you know, let us hear it from you. What? How did you come up with the name? We had some um, names when we were thinking about a name, like uh, Maui Noka Oil or something like that, or or Crunchy Oil, Crunchy oil. oil. But you know, we just wanted to make it generic, but at the same time, kind of witty. So. You know, we were coming up with names and I'm like, let's just repeat the chili because it's chili, chili and it's so good, so good. So let's name it twice. And that's how we came about it. And then it's just kind of yep. stuck. It's stuck forever. And that's it. I like it, though. It's catchy. So let's pull up the first graphic. And let's ask you guys, what made you decide on chili oil? Out of all the many things and the many condiments out there, why chili oil? Okay, well, this it all graphic, started. Go ahead. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it all started because um, during Christmas, I like to give my our close family and friends gifts of food. So, you know, everybody does, a, you know, like a salsa, everybody does uh, chili pepper water or something. So I just decided to try something new. We do um, cookies. And, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. And, and cookies. Yeah. But the chili oil was just something different. You know, they, we don't have anything like that on Maui. We have like a Japanese version here, but not the Chinese version, which is the style that we make, very Chinese inspired. Um, so we just tweaked the recipe, sent it to friends, and it caught on. So here we are selling it now. Yeah, it was a fun process, definitely a fun process. Still, still process today, <laughs> not done yet. Still learning a lot. The yeah. photo that we had earlier was one of the prototypes that we had when we were experimenting on the product. So that didn't work out because it, it, you know, it turned out it was disaster. It was yeah, it was flimsy, crazy. It leaked, <laughs> and it got oil all over the place. So we're like, oh no, this is not the the bottle for us. And so we just kind of tweaked it and tweaked it until you know we found um, the right formula for it. Um, yeah. But yeah, we we do everything from bottling to labeling. Uh, this was at the height of the pandemic, uh, if you want to talk about that, Darren. Yeah, like last year, actually about a year ago when we were experimenting in our living room. Yeah, and as, as you can imagine, a lot of people have been cooking at home, especially us, you know, trying to save money, uh, um, trying to make, make ends meet and, you know, uh, 
uh, why not just try to make our own own condiment? And you know, when I came across this recipe, um, uh, we were looking in the stores all over for it, but we couldn't find any. So we had to end up uh, ordering online all these different types of uh, Szechuan style chili oils. And you know, we just wanted to know what what the, what the standard was, and uh, we couldn't find anything that we really really liked as far as already prepackaged stuff. So we I tweaked the recipe even more and came up with our own, I guess, our own recipe, which is really simple, but, you know, uh, uh, it's a process. It's a, it's very time consuming and um, labor intensive. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's pull up the second graphic. Uh, since you mentioned that, so you guys do everything from like staring and packaging and all that. This is yes. from our little apartment. <laughs> so that there's our TV in the background, you know. Yes, so this, this was like last year. We're just test kind phase, of yes. testing testing uh, recipes. And this was this became the bottle that we use now. So this turned out really good. This bottle, this hexagon bottle, it's really sturdy and good quality. Um, but yeah, we just wanted to share this that you know it's a really small operation business, it's just me and my husband right now. Um, but yeah, we're, we're, we hope to see it grow, but it starts small. So, uh, yeah, we, would... we, like anybody else would have to start at home because, you know, we didn't have a kitchen back then. We didn't have, uh, we didn't have the direction, so we had to just start somewhere, which was with the recipe. And because the recipe turned out, um, as good as, you know, we, you know, you wanted it to do, we just, from there, we took off and tried to, um. Uh, figure out how how we can market and how we can get this on the market. So that's another learning process. That's that's great that you guys are doing every like. And I'm guessing that you've learned a lot through this process since you're going through it from like you know production to distribution. So let's pull up um, the third and fourth graphic. And while we're doing that, can you tell us about what it's like working together as a couple? in building this business well we we have a really good um we have really good communication uh we sometimes sometimes maybe we don't see eye to eye but you know we always come to uh i guess an agreement or like a compromise in doing things um i always think i'm right and i'm never always right and Kit is most of the time always right. So I have to give her grief until I realize, oh, she's right. Okay, let's do it your way then. But that's just the kind of the relationship that we have. Uh it sounds like we're fighting all the time and we're not. We're just, you know, just trying to trying to be the boss. And you know, we all know who the boss is. <laughs> <laughs> I think it helps. Um, you know, for a for a startup or you know, if you have a partner to balance ideas. Uh, with this at the beginning phase there were times that you know I was throwing the towel I was like giving up no energy and then there and would be the the enthusiastic one and then there are times that would switch that there and would be like really grouchy and you know I don't wanting to give up and then I would be like no let's do it let's do it let's give him a call let's try it so I think that's part of the process in the startup um so whether it be a your best friend or you know a, a relative or someone you trust i think it helps to have uh, a partner uh, if you would like to get into you know a, a business as well uh, but yeah the photos that uh, you're seeing here is just some behind the scenes we converted this little room into our fulfillment center now you see all the boxes uh, and this is Darren cooking in the kitchen so we were able to hire i mean rent a commercial kitchen to actually do our product um he doesn't look very happy in there i think because he's you know <laughs> that's, oh, concentrating. Concentrating. that's my zen look that's my i'm stirring and i don't want to burn anything and i don't want to burn my face look which yeah. has happened by the way i mean not burn the face but we have burned several batches you know just yeah. trial and error like it exploded like when we added wow. certain products and we weren't monitoring the temperature. So there were times that was pretty, pretty intense and pretty crazy, but it was good fun, good fun learning. So you can you can imagine that we're we're not tra classically trained chefs. We haven't gone to culinary school, but we did a lot, a lot of trial and error, uh, more a lot of error actually. So you, you can taste it in our product how much we grew 
as far as learning how to make our product and how how we I guess you know how much time we actually put into making the product. So it's not something we just put together. Okay, let's try and sell it real fast and make plenty of money. No, 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 no. We have to start slow. Start, start you know, start from somewhere and then just grow. So you know, and we're still growing. We're still growing with recipes. We have some recipes in our head that we want to try later on. But right now, it's all about trying to juggle everything from production to to um um ordering to, to mailing out and your marketing this is whole everything yeah so that's it's really really fun speaking of trial and error like, approximately how many times did you guys experiment with the ingredients before you were like ha this is this is what we're going to bottle uh maybe like four or five times uh well yeah it, with the small recipes of course it was maybe like yeah around four times and then as the recipes got bigger, um, you know, as far as making more bottles and more bottles, we had to um, adjust some some of the uh, measurements. So um, five or six times we had to go through this process uh, and we lost a couple of our batches, which was kind of devastating. <laughs> but, uh, you know, that's just how it goes. So we just kind of like, just pick ourselves up and move on. Yeah, Darren is um, very OC in the sense that he only wants to put the, the quality products out there. So it would really go through a, <laughs> a, a test uh, phase uh, before we put it on the shelves. You know, getting, um, getting the approval of some friends and family as well is, is important for us. So we have a, a close-knit group that we give our product to and have them test it and taste it and give us really constructive feedback this is hotter you know i like the, the heat in this one maybe this one needs a little bit more this so it was um a, a good process you know uh focus grouping the product yeah so we yeah. went maybe like three times of making uh uh the product before we actually sent it out to like family and friends we wanted to make sure that we liked it first before we gave it to like hey here they're gonna say something about it you know i don't, I don't want to fail i want them to be oh i like it right away kind of thing so you know, it was really meticulous on everything. And yeah, it went well. It went well, actually. You folks make me wish I lived on Maui and, and was your neighbor. <laughs> so I could be like, oh, I can, me, I will <laughs> test for you. Let me come over. Uh, but <laughs> earlier before the show, you guys mentioned that there are three different spice levels currently. Did I get that right? Correct. So we have an original, a medium, and a spicy kind spicy. So the original is really like mild. Uh, you can taste the the heat, a little bit of a heat uh, from the chilies itself, from the Szechuan chili chili flakes, but it's nothing overwhelming. The medium is um, a little a step up above the original, um, something where you know you don't want to really commit to the heat, but still you want that little bit of tingle and yeah, it kind of just stimulates the uh, the palate. And then we have a spicy kind of spicy that creeps up on you. You don't even know it's hot, and then you start sweating, and it's like oh. Yeah, it's just pretty hot, but you know, at the same time, you can taste your food, and it's it's this enhances everything. So, uh, yeah, it's 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 three distinct uh, heat levels, but you know, still very 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 tasty. You can still taste the product and your food. I love that you guys are offering options for individuals to choose what spice level works for them. So we are going to go on a short break, but when we come back, we'll be talking more with Kit and Darren about. Maui chili chili oil, um, as well as challenges that they may have faced during the pandemic and where to find the product. So we will be right back. Welcome back to Connecting Hawaii Business. Our guests for today are Kit and Darren Furukawa, owners of Maui Chili Chili Oil. So when we left off, they were talking about the three different spice levels of their product. Let's pull up the video and Kit or Darren, walk us through what we're seeing here once it pulls up, just so people have an idea oh, yeah. of the process. 
Yeah, it's just a quick video. So we uh, sterilize the bottles, we cook the onions and garlic ourselves. Darren does this process. So it's very fragrant where we, where we do the cooking in the kitchen. We use canola oil. We do the assembling of the different products. And this is the actual chili oil that uh, uh, there it is cooking in the fusion process. Um, and yeah, so we assemble all the products in the kitchen. Um, this is us pouring the oil in individual bottles. And when it's ready, and this is how it looks, when you open it, you can use it as a condiment, as a, um, I don't, I don't, for cooking, for your salad, for anything. Um, this is the heat seal. It, we do this here in the office now and just putting labels on it. So it, it's manual work, really. Uh, these are just videos on how you can use chili oil. You can use it as a sauce. We add a little bit of citrus in there and a little bit of shoyu. You know, you can use it as a sauce for your dumplings. This one, we're going to use gyoza. Uh, the next one, I'll have Darren explain because that's his favorite, uh, his poke, poke dish. Yeah, so you put a little bit of ahi, you put natto in there. You don't have to put natto if you don't like natto, which is the fermented soybeans. And you add a little bit of the chili, chili oil, whatever spice level you want. Goes good with any heat level. I uh, put a little bit or a lot, just mix it up and voila, you have your dish. And then you can put it over rice. You can eat it. Here we have it, has putting it over sushi rice. So a little bit of vinegar in the rice and um, yeah, topping it off right there. So yeah, we use it for all kinds of, all kinds of dishes. Very versatile chili oil, dipping sauces, adding after, adding before, adding during your meal. Uh, it, Goes well mixed with other stuff like shoyu because our our product is a uh, low sodium. You can add your own sodium to make it more salty according to your taste. So you're not you know you you, you can have a choice of how salty you want to make it. But yeah, it's it's very good. Uh, we recommend it recommend it to everybody. How we use it often too for us is for our late night uh, midnight ramen. You know when you cook oh, up yeah. ramen from Costco, we just add it in ramen or breakfast on eggs. You know when you have like your eggs and bacon, just add a little bit of chili oil in the rice and it just totally elevates the, the dish and makes it really fragrant. Um, but that was like a preview of the process. You know, getting to that part, um, there's a story behind, you know, the, there's a whole permitting process that we needed to go through. Uh, and that's something we can we can share with you as well. Yeah, go for it. I'm watching like during the video. I was thinking, why is this not a live show <laughs> again? <laughs> why do I not live on Maui? And why is this not a live show? But I know, right? anyway, go ahead, Kim. No, you know, uh, I wanted to mention also because the poke with chili oil was popular um, for friends and family. One of the local uh, grocery stores here actually adopted it. So Darren, you want to talk about Puk Soup? Yes, yeah, so if you go up to Pukalani Super Red, they actually have a poke that's called Maui Chili Chili Oil Poke. It's just ahi and onions, and then they mix the chili chili oil in it. So they have it in little containers at their store available for purchase. It's really, really good. Um, I, I tried. There's also another store called Mana Foods in Paia that uses our chili chili oil in one of their stir fry dishes. So they have a Thai uh, chicken stir fry that they use the chili chili oil and they order, you know, the bulk and mix it in their foods and, and offer that hot dish to the public. So we're really happy that people are actually using, you know, using it to cook with and, and um, as opposed to just using it as a, um, a personal stash and stuff. So, uh, yeah, thank you. <laughs> I love that. Okay, go over and, and I was going to segue into this anyway. What are some of the challenges that you guys have faced? So you talked about permitting and we can go over how COVID has um, had or has affected the business as well. So um, let's go over the permitting stuff that you were touching upon earlier. So yeah, so uh, getting the green placard was a process, you know, uh, uh, it's a daunting process if uh, if you don't have the right mindset for it, that's how I would describe it. It's a long process and for a reason, you know, we want to make sure that the product is safe and it's uh, ready for the public. So it's um, a few requirements, uh, a checklist uh, that uh, business owners have to go through. 
Um, but it's nothing, uh, nothing impossible. It's just like applying for college. You know, you have different steps that you need to go through. Uh, that took us a little while, also because of um, limited hours. I, I, I would assume for uh, the review. Uh, but but we went through it. You know, just 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 go over the steps one step at a time, and just don't give up. You know, if you're considering going into this business. Uh, ask around, ask for help. Uh, we were able to um, ask some friends who are already in the business how they went through the process. Um, and yeah, just just don't give up. Yeah, always ask for help. Even um, <clears throat> uh, a lot of it was dealing with the Department of Health in Hawaii. So we had to, uh, there was a long correspondence of one of the inspectors uh, of the kitchen that I was using. Um, uh, the process, he would not give answers because, you know, he want me to, to learn the, the process inside and out so I don't get anybody sick. But at the same time, he's very helpful in his, um, in his you know, he responds right away. And you ask him questions. It does, it's not like he waits two weeks to respond. He, he responds in an hour or whatever. And, you know, it, 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 make, it made the process a lot easier. Just the learning part was hard for me. You know, it's like going to school all over again because I had to do my due diligence, yeah make sure everything is kosher because I didn't have the training too. So I didn't know where to start and everything just kind of fell into place uh, after a while. So, oh, okay. I catch on now. And then the inspector realized, oh yeah, yeah, he does. He knows, he knows what he's doing. So um, that's, that's that. But another, another um, thing about the pandemic, well, especially now everybody would notice would be the supply chain issues. Oh my gosh. Like we've run out of, um, certain ingredients a couple of times and we had to halt uh, production, which kind of gave me a lot of anxiety because, you know, we have orders to fulfill and we want to get stuff out in the markets when we do like the little pop-up markets and everything. But uh, running out of product is always a fear of mine. Uh, we do order, uh, we do buy some stuff from Costco and going into Costco is like a gamble nowadays. You go in there and they don't have a certain product. Like, oh my God, what am I going to do now? <laughs> so uh, uh, yeah, just keeping on top of the ordering is is kind of, daunting but you know totally doable as long as you have um many avenues that you can you can try and get your supplies from you know? we have a few minutes left on the show so um while we wrap up could you go over some of the lessons that you've learned during this process yeah there can go lessons. first yeah go ahead um you have to well, we, I, I learned that I have to really like doing this. You know, we really love to eat. So, you know, that's really helps. Uh, uh, but, you know, making the chili oil is something that we had to like commit to. Um, obviously I stopped painting so I can do this full time um, because it's something I really, really like. And um, <clears throat> you have to, uh, uh, I, I'm at a loss for us. Go ahead, Kit. <laughs> <laughs> so I was gonna add to that, uh, making the product really good. So I think if you have a good product that you believe in, it's easy to market it and your friends and family will support you all the way. So really perfecting your craft and believing in what you offer, I think it's very important. In addition to a good product, having the right attitude to get into business oh, yeah. is yeah. important as well. You know, having the right mindset that, you know, it's not going to be cherry every day. You're going to have ups and downs but just not giving up, asking for help if you need it, taking breaks for yourself um, and eating, making sure that you sleep. Um, but yeah, you, you get really passionate with your work, but finding some, some balance also with your personal life uh, would, would, be, would be good. But yeah, having a good attitude towards business, believing in your product, offering a really good product. Those are some lessons that I guess we can share with, with, with the audience. There's a you know, great thought, lesson. Go ahead, Darren. I thought I would learn more about it during my process, but you know, she's still the same, very supportive. Even though I want to give up, she'd be there telling me to, you know, just push through. He says just... nice things because he cooks for me, so I let him. <laughs> I eat all his work. I eat all his food. <laughs> you guys are hilarious. Okay, let's pull up the fifth photo that we have. Um, where can people find you, folks? Chili All right, chili. so where can people yeah, find we, Maui Chili Chili Oil? We are located in um, seven. 
We're in, in different in different Anyways, we're up country. We're at Pukulani Super Red Mana Foods. Um, in town, you can find us at Island Grocery Depot, at uh, PJ's, I uh, Tamuras in Wailuku Kihei and Lahaina, uh, CAA Marketplace, and at um, Four Sisters Bakery. We're actually at a bakery, and um, we're. We're going to be featured at the Hui Noel Visual Arts Center in, in uh, Makawao. They're going to have us as their Christmas, uh, one of their uh, items for their Christmas gifts um, from November 19th to the 24th of December. So a whole bunch of places, you know, and we're, we're working on getting into more stores, but for now, you know, that's what we have. And upcoming this December is the reboot of made in maui county festival you know it was online the past weeks uh there was a crash on the website so the organizers decided to have a live in-person event in addition to the online so we're going to be participating with that december 4th uh, i'm pretty sure there's going to be marketing out in the community and on the social media for that but we're excited to feature maui chili chili oil and uh, get it out more into in, in the community so it's going to be uh, more sleepless nights. Yay. <laughs> so let's pull up the website so people can find you online. What is your website and your contact info? Yeah, MauiChiliChiliOil.com. So we ship anywhere in mainland U.S., Alaska to New York. So it's actually pretty exciting every time we get an order from like an unknown town that, oh, where is this from? Uh, we have shipped also uh, abroad to Canada and Japan, though we haven't figured out a, a cheaper shipping process for that. But in the mainland, if you have, if you like gifts to friends and family in mainland, we absolutely can ship. Just go online and order, place an order, and we'll we'll process it for you. Yep, and if you follow us on social media like Instagram or Facebook, we do pop up markets once in a while. Um, so we post maybe not too far ahead, but maybe like a week and a half ahead of the uh, uh, event. And um, if you stay tuned and you find us where we're moving to next. So yeah, check us out on social media. Thank you, Kit and Darren, for being on the show today to inform, educate, and let our viewers know about Maui Chili Chili Oil. It has been such a pleasure having you both on the show. So thank you very much. Thank, thank you, you for, for having, having us. us. Absolutely. Yay. And thank you to the folks at Think Tech Hawaii as well for making shows like this happen. We had Haley and Michael helping us out today. So thank you very much. And until next time, aloha.